While I felt very in control of my third birth with my son, I felt very disempowered once things kind of started to turn left. I felt dehumanized. I felt numb. It didn't turn me off from the healthcare system, but it, it definitely made me realize that like no one is truly safe. Even the doula who has the education is not truly safe in this birth setting or in this country. Because look, look what happened to me. My name is Tiana Soufrant. I'm a wife and mother of three boys. I am a full spectrum labor and birth doula here in New York City on Long Island. Let me email your teacher. They were both the catalyst to me wanting to become a doula. I really wanted to just provide information and more resources to birthing people that look like me around their options. We went into the birth of Noah uh, and thought that we were gonna have our vaginal birth after cesarean section. At around 12.30, my water broke. Doctor comes in and they're like, okay, let's just do a vaginal exam. And he goes, shit, shit, shit. It's a prolapse, it's a cord, it's the cord. From that point on, they acted unprofessionally. get into the OR and they're like, lay down. So the anesthesiologist is literally like forcing me down by my neck and then he starts like pushing on my face with the mask, trying to put the mask on my face. The anesthesiologist is like, you see, we're not doing this shit again. Everybody's getting an epidural. Everybody's getting a fucking epidural. We're not doing this shit again. It just brought me back to my two prior birth experiences of not having the support that I had went in there thinking that I was going to have. If you look at the statistics for maternal mortality, it's women like me. It's educated women with college degrees, married. We're the ones who are dying. Why is it happening? It's because we're not valued. It's, it's not just black women, it's, it's women in general because we're not valued. They don't trust us, they don't believe us. And women are suffering and birthing people are suffering because of it. You see the, con the stark contrast between the way in which black clients are treated and the way in which white clients are treated. With my white clients, they're spoken to very gently, they're treated very nice, they get any kind of like emotion, it's like it's okay, even by black nurses. They're much less inclined to like explain things to you. I dealt with a lot of clients who dealt with sexual trauma that first year. So of course with the black clients, they're never asking, can I touch you or can I do a vaginal exam? They're just doing it. I've had doctors call my Hispanic clients barbaric and stupid for wanting to have an epidural. Racism affects your body both directly um, and then also indirectly, right, through structures and everything else. I try to link this idea of how you treat patients and how you value patients to what we already do, what's called quality improvement, where we have standards across many, many disease states and many, many practices inside of obstetrics of what, how we're supposed to handle situations. Um, and if you don't meet those, then there's a consequence for you. And so we have to make treating people poorly something that if you don't meet, there's a consequence. Thank you so much. Can you open the door? So I have two clients currently. I'm working with Heather for postpartum and I'll be working with my repeat client, Amber, for her labor and birth. The top three causes of maternal death in this country are sepsis, infection, high blood pressure, or what they call eclampsia, and hemorrhage. Many times your partner or support people are gonna miss these things. Postpartum doulas specifically, but doulas would recognize that you may have these symptoms or signs. Having a surgical birth meant that when I came home from the hospital, you know, I was a patient. At the time when you feel the most responsible you've ever felt for this incredibly vulnerable human being. And so having the support of a postpartum doula at that moment was really, really important. In those first few weeks, it's hard because you're trying to juggle sleeping and breastfeeding. And so I do answer questions. For me, um, nursing was really painful. When Tiana started working with me, she helped me, you know, make sure his mouth was open wide enough and, you know, just kind of reassure me that I should 
keep working on it with him, which I think without her, I would have just sort of given up. Even after kind of coming back into birth work, I still felt like, what do I mean as a, like, what am, who am I as a doula? Like, how am I gonna support families? How do I like even navigate after having that experience? How do I navigate and still feel or have faith in what I thought was some semblance of like respect for the birthing person and the birthing body? Like, how do I navigate that? I'm happy to be there. I'm happy to support them. I'm happy to empower them. But like, where is my place? Like, how do I find my place again in birth work when it's something that I really am very passionate about? And I don't know if I'm gonna ever find it. Because the system broke me. Like, it broke my heart. I will be asking for my medical records and then sitting down to have a meeting, hopefully with the head of the um, obstetrics department. I want to see the lactation consultant much sooner than I did before. Clark had to stay in the hospital two more days post me because leaving because she hadn't eaten. Meanwhile, I had a crazy supply. So none of that makes sense but I didn't know the right questions to ask. And I was checked out of the hospital, so I had to go back and forth. So that was just emotional. And yeah, it was horrible. And on top of that, two days in the NICU is expensive. I'll try right away and even, you know, I stay up to an hour after. I can stay longer like if baby doesn't latch, but even if it doesn't happen the next day, I would say just get on. I truly no? do mm -hmm. think that she's, she's ready to come. Okay, well, I'm ready. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> are you fully, are you guys fully? Yes. My house is clean. Yeah. Ooh. I'm gonna try a little push. Yes. Yeah. 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 In terms of my personal story, I absolutely needed Tayana there. I'm able to replay the story in a very positive way because she was there. So key moments when I needed to labor down through a very difficult contraction, I can picture her face, I can picture her you know, giving me the mantra that I needed to get through it. I truly can't imagine Tayana being part of um, my birth story. So right now, um, we're going to see my OB because I want to speak to him about some stuff that I had been feeling about my birth. But here's the thing, here's what, here's what really traumatized me. So I get in the room and the anesthesiologist is trying to push me down physically, like lay me down to the bed, the Indian, this Indian anesthesiologist. And then the big burly doctor who called the prolapse said, um, do you want your baby to die? And that part, like freaked me like freaked me out of course and I was like of course I don't and I just lay down and then the anesthesiologist they asked like well, what do you want us to do and I was like can you please hold my hand and he held my hand and I went to sleep she had a traumatic experience mostly because of how it emergently came at the end so um, as soon as it was recognized that there was a cord prolapse uh, now she has to abandon the idea of having a vaginal delivery now she has to emergently get general anesthesia, so she's not going to be awake for the procedure. As much as that's a traumatic experience, uh, there was no harm to the baby, there was no harm to the mother, and she adjusted and got over it, and this is how obstetrics works. When I left the meeting, I still felt very unsure in that he was trying to discount what it is that I was saying by trying to humanize their experience, but not humanizing what I was telling him that I had felt. I get mad at myself because I'm like, I should have fought back. But the thing is, you don't know if it truly was a, pro a cord prolapse, but because I was taking so long, and they do these things, and people don't believe that they do, but they do. If your labor takes too long, they will call it a failure to progress, or they'll call it an emergency, and they'll have have you have a c-section and those are those are the things that are happening to birthing people in this country a 
across the globe, the C-section rates tend to usually be in the, below 20%, sometimes 15 to 20%. The average in the U.S. in the high 30s. There's some hospitals that have a 50% chance of having your first time vaginal birth being a C-section. So we have a wide variety of what doctors are choosing when it comes to C-section. Some of it is from patient choice. When I see providers who do C-sections really quickly or, or want to schedule them at a certain time, the, the belief that it's an economic incentive in general is not necessarily, mostly it's about people's time. There could honestly be lots of people who are abusing that policy um, so that they can go home at five o'clock. I know I'm gonna take this next year to kind of like give myself some time to heal because I, I only really took four months and really never really processed my birth until about his first birthday. I looked in the mirror and physically was like, I don't even know who that person is. And that, I, don't, I think that that comes from the trauma. The crazy thing about it is my doctor wasn't even there. He actually stepped out when my water broke. How old are you now? And he said when he walked in the OR, there was blood everywhere. He was like, my guts were like all over the place. He was like, it's the worst like thing that he's ever seen. I lost so much blood. I lost like 800 liters of blood. Ultimately, distrust is what, uh, what broke that relationship for me. I chose to transition and begin um, my care with a midwife who I trust. With this situation, I feel like my health depends on it. We almost died because of that. I'm thankful that my child was healthy and that's usually what they say, well at least your baby was fine. It's like, that doesn't matter because you have left a stain on my heart and in my aura and my psyche for the rest of my life that even if I wanna have more children, I think twice about it. <laughs>